Okay, it's not about the amount of strokes, it's about how deep they are. <laughs> it's not the amount of strokes, it's about how deep they are. No one will ever tell you that in your life. Beardo Benjo. If you told me, back at the beginning of 2022, that one of the very best VR games I was going to play within the first six to seven months of the year was a VR kayaking game, I would have slapped you in the face and spit in your shoes. But here I am. We're seven months into the year, and I spent a long time last night playing this final build of Kayak VR Mirage. I was up until around 2am playing this game. I haven't done that in a VR game for a very long time. I think the last VR game that had me that excited and had me wanting to play it almost constantly was Resident Evil 4. This is not just one of the best VR games I've played so far this year. This is one of the best VR games I've ever played. And I know that's a huge statement. I know it's a massive statement to make, but I truly believe it. Because the developers here have focused in on one concept and they've gone all out to execute that concept perfectly. This game is a kayaking game and that's all that it is. But it is the best damn representation of kayaking that these guys could have possibly built in this particular game, in this particular medium. It feels incredible, and we will talk about the visuals as well as we get a little bit further into this video, because I feel like it would be crazy not to. These are some of the very best visuals I've ever seen in a video. Let me look at it. Absolutely, just look at this game. It is gorgeous, and this level, which is just a pool, is probably the least impressive. I think this game is a perfect example of focusing in on one thing, one concept, one gameplay loop. That's your goal. We want to make a kayaking game. And they've gone all out to make it feel and look so, so perfect. Come here, Flamingo. Come here. <laughs> Take that, you bugger. Up you come. <laughs> um, in today's video, we're going to have a look at all the levels available. There's four levels currently available. And, and then this pool as well. There's things to unlock, there's races, and there's free roam. This is an exceptional package. The game is out today, and I just urge everyone who's a fan of VR to play it. It's an experience unlike anything else out there. It isn't bombastic. It isn't high octane. You know, it isn't a crazy 100 miles an hour action adventure experience. But what it does is simulate something so, so perfectly that it makes you remember just why VR is so special. So this is the content that's currently available inside Kayak VR Mirage. We have four different levels. We have Costa Rica, Antarctica, Norway, and Australia. Now, I'm sure at some point they will add more levels, but when you see these levels and you see the level of detail that goes into them, you'll realize that creating one of these stages is no small feat, so I don't know when we'll see more or if we'll see more. I'd like to hope we will. Each level has a free roam mode and a set of races. Now, the races, there's a few in each level, so this one has a couple of different ones. We've got downstream, we've got Olympic. So just the two there in that in that level, in the Australia level, but in Costa Rica, for example, there's Coralicious, Welcome to the Jungle, Day Trip. Yes, there's a few more in there, and they vary in difficulty. So each level has a free roam, and some races. The game also has a shop, so you play every day, let's say, and you earn miles. So, sea miles. Now, to buy a new kayak, that costs 500 sea miles. So I've got a long way to go. You can also buy different colored kayaks. There's a really nice uh, camo on there. Paddle skins hats to wear for the multiplayer so it is asynchronous multiplayer so you don't play at the same time but you will see characters alongside uh when you're doing the races and they are logged times online and then there's inflatables for the pool so we can get a turtle a whale an orca and a toucan which is just fantastic so there's stuff to work towards stuff to unlock but the real joy here is just exploring these locations let's start in norway i think Oh my god, it's incredible. 
each of these levels is a handcrafted delight that you'll just want to spend so much time in. As I say, I played this until about 2am last night um, for about three hours, I think. I started playing quite late, but I didn't intend to play for that long because I know, I knew I needed to be up for work in the morning, but I couldn't pull myself away. And you can kind of see why, right? It's gorgeous. Now, one thing I didn't mention is each of the levels has settings for whether you want to come into them on a daytime cycle or a nighttime cycle. Oh my god. And this Norway one in particular has a storm cycle. So here, the sea is exceptionally choppy, which does actually impact how you manoeuvre the kayak. You're dipping under the water more, the, the water level isn't still, so you need to adjust the paddle to meet the water to propel yourself forward. So it is harder to manoeuvre, and the waves will knock you in different directions. Oh my god! So you need to correct a little bit. Um, oh, it's just such a phenomenal ambient experience. This is why we want VR, right? We want to be transported somewhere and feel like we're actually there. This is why PC VR can be so powerful and is currently so underutilized. You know? Hearing the storm, oh my god, seeing the choppy sea, the raindrops hitting the sea, the lightning strikes. It's amazing. I think there's some creatures over there. Let's go see them. Hello, mate. You alright? Hello? Are you friendly? Please be friendly. Hello? <laughs> okay, I'll leave you alone. I'll get out of here. Let me push off these rocks. Uh, push off the rocks. Uh, there we go. Oh my word. Now one thing I'll struggle to show you in this video is just how big these levels are. Um, I'll go for that little gap over there. The Costa Rica one, which I'll load up next, is overwhelmingly large. Um, and you'll see what I mean when we get there, but it has gorgeous blue seas, sandy beaches, little islands that you can kind of explore. Um, but it also has a, a jungle stream running through the middle of it that you can find. And then you're kind of immersed in this really lush green jungle. Just look at it! But I don't want to harp on about how gorgeous it looks, but like... Oh, the, the soundscape changes in here! Because I'm a little bit more, like, kind of protected. In these rocks. And the water isn't as choppy because I'm between the two. If a developer sets out to make a first-person, stealth, battle royale, racing, football game, they're going to struggle on so many fronts because they're trying to perfect too many things. It's the jack-of-all-trades, master-of-none argument. This game isn't trying to be a jack-of-all-trades. It's trying to be a master of VR kayaking. And because it has a simple concept that it just wants to excel in, it's able to do so. They focused on creating environments that look breathtaking and make you think that you're there. They're focused on the physics of moving the kayak around and the way it feels to actually play. And it is very tactile. You can make slight adjustments. They're focused on the soundscapes that, again, make you feel like you're here. They focused on this experience and this experience alone. There you go, mate. You're a big boy. Can I get you? Hey, splash him. Splash him. Uh, uh, uh. I can't really splash him. He doesn't seem to care anyway. He's a crab, after all. I don't think they care about water. There's another one. Amazing. From the crab-infested stormy shores of Norway we arrive at the crisp white beaches and clear blue seas of Costa Rica. This is probably my favorite level because why the hell wouldn't it be? Look at it. I just, I just don't know, man. Now, one thing I do have to, can I go through there? Do you think? No, that's far too small. I won't fit in there. That's ridiculous. One thing I do have to mention is the game has some wonderful ambient music for when you're free roaming like this. And then when you play the races, um, some more typical kind of 
electronic, dancey, but still quite ambient, um, poppy type songs come on. Now, I have disabled them for this video um, purely because we didn't know the status of the copyright for YouTube use. Um, I did ask the devs and they weren't 100% sure, so we've disabled just to be safe. But you can have music playing as you explore these environments, and it's just kind of nice, calming, ambient music. I personally quite like the experience of not having the music. Um, or I'd, I'd suggest put on your own music. You know, layer some music over from Spotify. Layer, layer on your favourite tracks. And um, just, it's escapist. It's so escapist. Right, let's aim for, let's go through this little kind of archway over here. Now I haven't quite got my um, technique down just yet. When you play the races, and we'll do a race in a moment, you'll see that some people are already insane at this. There's some crazy scores, and people are really fast. Now, you get more speed by putting the paddle deeper into the water. Oh, I'm going to crash. I'm going to crash! Oh, bloody crashed. Buggering, buggering bollocks. Okay, I can't go over that, but there is a reset kayak button, which means it puts you back away from harm's way which is nice there we go around the rocks so yeah i haven't quite worked out my technique yet but some people really are oh is that a fish hello fish oh well, it's like a maui 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 i only know that from animal crossing oh the cave sound and all the little drops of water it's in oh, it's incredible it's a beautiful game right yeah so to really pick up speed in this game you need to put your paddle deeper into the water. It's not about spinning left to right faster. It's about bigger, deeper strokes. <laughs> bigger, deeper strokes. Um, and that will pick up some speed quite quickly. I am going quite fast now. So that is how you get into the jungle. So I've had to basically um, kayak all the way around the island to the other side. But now that I'm here, I can go through a stream that takes me through the middle of this island and it's it's a proper jungle path um, which is really exciting because it's just a very different aesthetic going through here Let's show you a little bit of this look at this jungle oh my god this is, and I'm not throwing shade here, this is what I wanted Green Hell VR to look like and Green Hell VR looks very good don't get me wrong, but it doesn't look like this. I mean, look at this. All of the foliage interacts with my oar, my paddle. Is it an oar? This is what I wanted from Green Hell VR, and it, it kind of didn't quite live up to that. Oh my god, this is phenomenal. And I know Green Hell VR is much more complex. I understand that. We're just on the water here. We're not chopping things down. It doesn't need all the other systems. But you can't help but wonder what it would be like if we did have a survival game in VR in a jungle that looked as good as this. Looks almost Jurassic. Expect to see like a T-Rex coming out. I'd love them to do some events where like things like that happen. That would be cool. Like a Halloween event where things go a bit spooky maybe and there's like tribes of people in the jungle and they can kind of taunt you or like the um, the stormy Norway one might have like the Kraken or something. That would be amazing. Or Cthulhu. Oh, I love it. We've arrived in very chilly Antarctica, although it doesn't feel chilly because it's about 30 degrees in the UK. So I feel like I'm melting looking at all these ice caps, which is a little strange. But um, oh. now you do get a penalty if you hit these poles. This is the racing mode. And as I say, I'm not very good at it. So please bear with me as I inevitably crash or figure out that I can't turn around a corner tight enough and it all goes wrong. But it's nice to have these races in here as well. It gives a bit more purpose to the game. For those of you that want a bit more of a gamey experience and not just a free roam, this is great to have. Okay, turn. This corner always gets me. No, that's it. I've got it. I've got it. I've got it. I've got it. There we go. Oh, there's races on every one of the levels currently. And um, yeah, I think they add a lot of value to the game. Come on. Turn around. Turn around. But they're just harder to talk over <laughs> because I get... Oh, I hit the iceberg! It's like the Titanic, but way less dramatic! Oh my god! Oh my god, oh my god! Okay, come on, come on. We gotta pull it back, we gotta pull it back. Oh, it is a workout. <laughs> it's a stealthy workout, dressed up as a very escapist, gorgeous VR kayaking game. 
Don't hit the pebbles. Oh, that's it, that's it, that's it. Pull back. That's it. Oh, another shortcut there. Look, I can, I can identify these shortcuts straight away. All right, we just need to go through here so we don't hit this iceberg. These icebergs, I guess they're not bergs, but they are cubes. Okay, here we go, here we go, here we go. Don't hit the pole, don't hit the pole. Spin, 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 spin. Oh my god, I'm gonna miss that one. I'm gonna miss it. No, I'm not. <laughs> I might show this whole race uncut so you can see how terrible I am. Um, because the sneaky side of me is like, ah, let's just leave. Let's just cut out the bit. Oh, I hit the pole. Whoa. Let's just leave the bits where I'm doing good and cut out the bits where I'm doing shit. But I don't want to be dishonest. Not with you guys. <sighs> I want to be as honest as possible. I'm not very good. Okay. I think this is my best time, though. 220. I think some people are getting this done in under a minute. Or maybe just over a minute. Right. Home stretch. Home stretch. Virtual go. I'm coming for you. You bugger. Oh, here we go. Where are the penguins? There should be penguins on this level, right? Here we go. Stamina. Stamina. We're nearly there. We're nearly... I'm going to cock up the end. We did it. I finished. 3 minutes 13, there's a penguin, that's my reward. I get to see a penguin at the end. Now, for some bizarre reason, and I don't know where this error is coming from, if I play the game via Steam, where I have the copy of the game, uh, it comes up Beardo Benjo. If I play the game... There it is, there's me, look, I beat my old time. If I play the game on Oculus, it comes up Jose. So I don't know if Oculus, the Oculus PC app, thinks I'm called Jose, or if the game's just designating me that. And finally, we arrive in gloriously sunny Australia. Now, I think a lot of people have already showcased this level because I think this was the first one available in the public demos. Um, but I wanted to end with it because I wanted to show all of the courses currently available. And this is still an absolutely stunning location. I don't know why I've picked this race, though. This race is like a four-star difficulty, and it is really hard. Um, so I don't think we're going to get it done. <laughs> There's a really tight turn that comes up in a little while, and I just cannot get it. I don't know how. I'm not a professional kayak er kayaky kayak er I don't know what was the word kayaker Prob uh, oh no <laughs> that counted for some reason come on come on round the corner right get round this corner get round this corner get round this corner that's it that's it that's it that's it come on now spin 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 don't dodge it don't dodge it oh okay I've got it but I hit the pole oh that's the first time I've got that bloody corner that's awful horrible tight corner Okay, here we go. Who's this boogaloo person in front of me? Oh my god, this is a terrible time. Ugh. It feels like now my temperature in the real world matches what it looks like in game. Um, as I say, I'm absolutely sweating right now. It's about 30 degrees here in the UK. Terrible day to play VR. But it's uh, adding to the immersion of kayaking through this uh, Australian obstacle course. Because I imagine it would be boiling hot there as well. Uh, hit that with my face. Spin around. Spin around. No! Okay, it's fine. I'm currently on 3 minutes and 35 seconds. The best time on this race is 50 seconds. I did tell you I was... Oh, I missed it. I did tell you I was garbage at this one. Um, is it going to let me go through this gate, even though I missed that one? I'm going to miss this one as well. <gasps> 4 minutes 42! Well, I need an awful lot of practice. I'm almost at 5 minutes. This guy's stuck, though. That's kind of funny. Um... <laughs> <laughs> I need so much practice. I think I will stick to the free roam oh, free roam game modes because I'm terrible at the races. In my defense, this one was <laughs> no medal, no shit. This one was a four star difficulty, so like I probably jumped in the deep end there. My arms are aching, so we're going to finish here where we started. We are back in Norway, but it's not stormy anymore. We're playing a daytime race. I'm going to sum up my thoughts. Now, this is kayak vr mirage and it's just a perfect example of what kind of quality can be achieved if you have a clear goal and you don't overcomplicate what you want to achieve these devs have just set out to make the best kayaking game they can in vr and my word have they succeeded this thing is gorgeous it sounds gorgeous it's great to play but quite hard to master i mean anyone can come in here and make their kayak move through the water you know back and forth back and forth you're moving but to start getting the speed and the accuracy that some of these players are getting is going to take a lot of practice so there is a level of depth here that i didn't quite expect as well um i absolutely love it this is what we should strive for for all vr games not for all vr games to be kayaking ones of course but all vr games should be this kind of immersive escapist experience that's a real testament to what the technology can do. This is a real testament to what VR can do. 
I, I gen genuinely believe that. Come on. Sharp turn, sharp turn, sharp turn. Look at that sharp turn technique. These are the kind of experiences I want in VR. Um, I think they're the, the kind of experiences that all VR enthusiasts want. Real immersive kind of uh, experiences that we can't just have in a flat screen game. This is utilizing everything. Ooh, look at that. Okay, I'm getting kind of good at that. I'm getting kind of good at that. It's utilizing everything that makes VR special and I just love it for it. This is out today. Please do go and check it out on Steam. Look at me, I'm rocking. I'm not sure how much it is. I didn't actually ask how much the price is, but <laughs> whatever it bloody is, I think it's going to be worth it. One of the very best VR games I've played in a very long time. And uh, yeah, just a must-have for VR lovers all over the world. I hope you've enjoyed this video, guys. If you have, please do leave a like, leave a comment, and hit subscribe. And I'll see you very soon for another video. I think the next one will be, maybe... Twilight Zone VR on Thursday, so uh, I guess I'll see you there. Take care. Oh, I'm doing so well in this race. I'm so proud of myself. I don't know how long it is, though. <laughs> Take care of yourselves, and uh, I'll see you all very, very soon. Goodbye! Let's go! Let's go! Let's go!